This week on Erotic Awakening, age gap ethics, intimacy on the plate, and more age stuff. BDSM and non-standard relationships. Power exchange and polyamory. Sacred sexuality and fetishes. As well as simply fun kink. You'll find shows on these topics and all things Dan and Don at eroticawakening.com. Welcome to Erotic Awakening, an exploration of all things erotic. If you are offended by adult topics or prohibited by law, we recommend you stop listening right now. Hi, Don. Hi, Dan. So, Don, how old is the... Well, I wouldn't ask you how old you are. That's not appropriate at all. <laughs> That's coming up to be a very big number in a couple of months. But somebody did ask, what's the greatest difference in age between you and a playmate? And that came from Spooky61 on The Fet Life. So, um, yeah, I asked uh, for random sex questions, and this is the one that was offered. So I thought it was kind of interesting. So what is the youngest playmate? Yep. What is the biggest age difference? So I was trying to think of that before the show, and it probably would have been about five years ago, mm-hmm. which would have made me, <clears throat> all right, we're talking age, 45, mm-hmm. and them 22. So it's 45 minus 22. That would be yeah, 23. Holy shit. There was a bigger age difference between us than she was old. <laughs> How's that for? I did an no. Age it, gap? Is it twenty three? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it is. Which would have made it twenty five ish years between you and her. Wow. Yeah, now I'm feeling old. So mm. maybe this isn't such a good topic to talk about when I'm drawing up on fifty years old. <laughs> Today on the podcast, we are going to talk about the ethics of that age gap. Yes. And, uh, whether it's appropriate to be playing with people. And interacting with people younger than yourself or older than yourself, for that matter, mm-hmm. and and what that line is. We also have a really neat uh, interview of sorts with the author of a new book, or at least the daughter of the author of a new book called Intimacy on the Plate. It is a book all about how to cook food, prepare food, and make use of it as an aphrodisiac. And they do a wonderful job of explaining that and do a wonderful job of, of doing the interview themselves. I said, go do that interview and send it over to me. And they said, we will. So they're taking over the podcast for a little bit, a little bit later in the show. I actually um, was listening to a piece of that. And um, I'll probably listen to the whole thing uh, by the end of the night because they were actually talking about things like zinc. Mm-hmm. Having zinc in your food, and we know for a fact that zinc is supposed to help increase your libido. Mm-hmm. So that's I'm I'm gonna listen to it. Not not that I need any help. Well, <laughs> I, I may need a little help. I don't know. Did I do okay? I don't Jump see. Starting. I don't see where you need any help whatsoever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've noticed uh, we've mentioned that Don's libido has been a little low since the surgery. Apparently, that's done. Yeah. And we are back to full normal levels. I don't know about full normal level, but it is definitely ramping up. <laughs> so, awesome, awesome. I'll take a listen to that. I'm so, curious. we don't have a tremendous lot to talk about mm-hmm. before we get into the topic, other than to uh, mention that we do have a new subscriber to the newsletter. Oh, we do? That would be Cristela of Toronto. Nice, nice. So, yeah, we don't have a lot on, on today's notes. You know, we do have an event coming up, though. Do we now? Winter Wickedness. Oh, yes. We are going to Winter Wickedness. I'll be doing a little auctioning. As usual. I love your auctioning. Our um, our costumes should be in the mail on Wednesday. I believe the theme is pirates. It is. It is. And it's actually kind of neat because after the surgery, I had so many more options of things that I could buy that I'll be able to reuse at leather events and stuff later. So that's kind of fun. So, yes. Why do you have surgery? To cut off your belly? So you can buy sexy clothes. <laughs> I'm going to really like that skirt. I hope it fits. And the only other thing we'll mention before we get into this topic is that uh, we'll have to be very careful how we title this topic. Mm. If you're not aware and you use the Fet Life, uh, they've had a big purge lately. Um, a variety of groups. For example, our friends Kevin and Katie have a group called Stalking Kevin and Katie. Right. That group's been deleted. Yep. 
anything to do with hypnotism, age play, littles, blood, etc., has been removed from the Fet Life. So the edgier stuff. Yes. Or at least some of the edgier some stuff. Some of the edgier stuff. And and it's a little challenging to tell at this point what they're what is and is not allowed. They're starting to get a little more clear about that. We won't get into that on this episode, but it does lead me to not being able, I cannot call this episode uh, Ethics of the Age Gap and have it posted on FetLife without it being deleted. Huh. So, so we'll have to come up with some way to do that. in dating or something like that. Because it's, yeah, we can come up with something. So. I was going to talk a little bit about that whole FetLife thing, but I was looking through the thread <sighs> that John Baku, the uh, creator and uh, big... Big chief? Big chief of the FetLife... And once you get into, uh, he does, he goes through why they made these changes. But once you get into the last couple of pages, page 56 is the end of the responses. Oh, my God. And now it's all about, um, oh, welcome to Trump's America. And it's got nothing to do with Trump. It's a Canadian company. I know. (laughs) Uh, My favorite one is uh, somebody uh, who I will no, I guess I won't call them out, but they posted okay. um, the last few weeks and FetLife has bet botched this so terribly, I refuse to give them my money. But they then go on later and they say, well, adios. And then they a couple post, couple comments later, they respond to, and a couple comments later, they post again. So apparently they they're willing to hang yet, out. <laughs> they're just not willing to, to pay, but they're willing to hang out and use the service for free. It's good enough to be free. So whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's um, frustrating to some people, but, um, you know, then again, it is it's a free service. It's his service. He can do what he wants to with it, right? So, I'm assuming, I haven't read the thread, I'm assuming he's covering his butt somewhere. Absolutely. And if you, like, are totally, um, hey, I don't dig it, there's options. For example, you can head over to thecage.co. It's a, a newer site that they are trying to put together to give you an alternative to FetLife. Currently, there's only 2,600 members, so you can still get a cool username. Cool. You might be able to be Dan. I, I picked Daniel Bellum. I figured I'd just uh, go over there right off the bat. Okay. Well, it's not like anybody would have that one, though. So, so but, Dawn, um, what, is it, what do we know about the ethics of age gaps? Uh, you, had, I saw you studiously taking some notes beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Go. Well, I was going to say, um, I took a class with uh, Master So-and-So. I sat in the beginning of that at Beyond the Love, and um, it, was, it was the ethics of the age gap. So, and um, he was going over some of the ethics, and it's like, oh, you know, this is really cool. Well, then, now we're how many months out? We're, we're a couple of months out, plus we're post-surgery, we're post-anesthesia brain. Now I can't remember a couple of the things he covered, but I do remember enough to the, the stuff that made a point to me is okay. what I remember. So right before we started recording, I went online to go, okay, well, these things have to have a name, so let me go look up the names. But everything I was finding was about the monogamous community. So everything I was finding was talking about age gaps between people that you're going to marry and people that you're going to have kids with. And things like that. So, and to me, that's different than what we look at in the poly world or the kink world, Mm -hmm. right? When we dated or when you had collared Slave Jim, her age didn't really matter. It was more about how she conducted herself and how she matched with us as a play partner or a submissive, Mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. So, I got a few things to bring up. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> well, let's just say if you were following two of these ethics, Slave Jim would have been way out of the realm. Okay. <laughs> and the current girl, so that is, um, I don't even know how to describe her at this point. I may leave that to you, <laughs> is also under the realm of at least two of these ethical principles. Okay? Okay. But I found a third one that works for us. 
So let's describe the other two first. Because if you've ever taken an ethics class, there's all kinds of rules and structures of ethics and how to see if something is ethical based on someone else's approach and blah, blah, blah. So one of the most, quote, famous approaches is the half your age plus seven. Okay, so we'll have to do some math. Half your age plus seven should Mm -hmm. be the minimum age of the person that you date. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, let's say Slave Jim was 22. I was 45. (laughs) Half of 45 is 23 plus seven. (laughs) When I was 45, the youngest I should date should have been 30. Huh. Okay, now that I'm almost 50, mine is 20, so that's, what is that, 25 plus 7, 32. So according to that rule, you should not date anyone younger than 32? Exactly. Okay. So, and no one, let's see, my age minus 7 would be 43. Your age minus 7 times 2? And no one over 86. Oh, wow. What a range. So somewhere between 32 and 86 is what I'm allowed to date. (laughs) Well, two out of three. Okay, my two partners fall in that range, but not the person that I'm dating. So I'm sitting in Master So-and-So's class, and he goes over this half your age plus seven. And I'm sitting next to someone, and I'm writing down the notes, and I do the calculation, and I'm like, failed that one. And she looks at me, she goes, Dawn, for shame. I said, that's okay, maybe there's another one that fits. (laughs) And then the next one was, no one younger than your your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those are younger than my children. Slave Jem was, and the current person is. So I just wrote that down and went, oh, failed that one. (laughs) And that really gave me the look. Are you sure that the current person is younger than your children? Uh, Certainly. As far as I know, she has not had her 30th birthday, and our oldest son has. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh Uh-oh, that one made you think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, so I'm sitting in there, and everybody's agreeing, and everybody's agreeing, and I'm going, oh, I failed both of those. Uh Uh-oh. And then, um, but the third one that he came across was called the campground. What what is it? The campground ethic? The campground rule? I think it was the campground rule. And that one was leave them better than you found them. And I'm like, oh, that I can do. I can do the campground rule. I like that one. So that one made me feel better that there was actually a structure. I didn't fail like all seven of them or something. (laughs) So, but, I mean, age gap seems to... Actually, age gap seems to bother me more than it bothers you. So, because I always, I mean, I play with a lot of people. And, um, I mean, like, Slave Jem was really, really young. But I always told people that I wouldn't date. I kind of considered her out of the rules because she was collared. It's not like we were dating her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it depends how you look at that. We spent time with her. She spent time with us, you know, at our house. She, um, but it's not like we would go out to dinner with her or go to the movies. You know what I mean? So it's not like it was dating in that realm. But she was, and I I always told people I would never date anybody younger than my kids and was emphatic about it. And then uh, things happen. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. With Slave Jim, it just felt different. She was in college. She was really mature for her age. Um, We could have conversations, intellectual conversations. (laughs) Probably the only time I realized when maybe she was a little too young for us was when her uh, text message ringtone went off. And I knew I knew what the sound was. And then I realized it was the Power Rangers. And I knew what the sound was because I used to watch the Power Rangers with the boys when they were growing up. So so that was probably my first, probably my own little, uh, my the only time that I really felt a ping that, oh, she really is young. 
So, but we definitely followed the campground rule with that one before we even knew what it was. But that's our ethics anyway. Leave them better than you found them. So, but you don't seem to have a an issue with the age gap. No, I, like you said, right, I'm not, we're not necessarily, um, with Slave Jam, we weren't looking for a life partner. Right. Right? With, um, see, I don't see particularly any difference in some regards between Jem and Slave Bat, who was in our age range. Mm-hmm. Um, in that the purpose in their life, the purpose that they had, that I had in their life wasn't really driven by age. It didn't have anything to do with that. Any time that you have to do to break out a pencil or a calculator to figure out if you're supposed to be dating somebody doesn't seem like a very valid way to figure it out for, to me. The ethical part comes from, are you an ethical person to start with? How are you? And if so, can you treat the person ethically? Um, with Slave Jem, I never had intercourse with her because that didn't feel appropriate. As a matter of fact, after a little bit of play, that part of our relationship was over. With Slave Bat, the same. I never had intercourse with her because that didn't feel appropriate for that relationship. With um, Both had different reasons and both were very significantly different ages. And I just don't see that the age, you know, the, the reason to come up with these ethical rules is to prevent you, I assume, to from taking advantage of people. Mm, mm-hmm. And since I didn't take advantage of anybody, I didn't see it as a real issue. Now, we're not talking about play partners. I don't know that um, play partners, from a play partner perspective, you know, how old, you know, how young is the youngest person you should dance with? Well, does it matter? It's a dance, as right? As long as they're legal. They're legal, it's consensual, <laughs> then who cares? Uh, for a relationship, a power exchange relationship, it goes back to the saying, you know, if I meet a, uh 80-year-old man who needs to learn something, I will teach. And if I meet, for this, in case of this one, a 21-year-old man who can teach me something, I'll sit at their feet and learn. So, you know, it, it, age is, and again, age is such a weird thing anyway. A 29-year-old in today's age is a far different critter than a 29-year-old from, you know, that was born in 1950. Just the world's a different different animal. Um, so, that's my take on it. So, I think the the... The thought is, as long as you're an ethical person, the ethics and an age gap will fall into place. So, you know, maybe in the kink world, mm, somewhat in the poly world, um, poly would be a little different because you are creating relationship relationships. You know, just be ethical in general. So, um, one thing I would point out is... uh, you know, there may be generational things that we don't understand, like the Power Rangers, right? There may be way that um, communication is different between the different generations. But to me, that's no different than learning as an introvert how an extrovert communicates or vice versa. So, you know, it's just so there'll be communication skills and things like that. But um yeah, ever since uh, the most recent person that I'm dating, I don't remember if we're allowed to say her name or not, but ever since um, coming into contact with her, I've kind of let go of those um, models of half your age plus seven or not younger than the oldest child or something like that. I'm taking it more as on a one-on-one person sort of basis, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I'm still happy that Master So and So had that other <laughs> rule of the campground, the campground rule. So, leave it better than you found it. That kind of keeps you in your ethical system. You know, I think of when I am spending time with somebody like Cat, who is my age, almost literally, and 
this other person who we've decided not to name. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not seeing anybody that, who's significantly o- or at all older than me. Um, but they all, it's all just different. It's not bad or good or right or wrong, but they all are all different. They all bring different things to those relationships. Um, and that to me is, you know, why you're in all these multiple relationships, why you, why you interact with people at all. It's not, you know, it'd be a weird world if I had to limit myself to a certain you know, two years plus or minus my age, because am I even my age? You know, I, I can get into all that weird esoteric, it's just a number um, sort of thing. I like that question, though. Are you even your age? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I feel my age. Some days I absolutely don't, and I'm surprised when I go, I- I'm how old? <laughs> I- I'm not feeling that old right now. Yep. Hi, this is Gregory Deal. I'm the owner of Identity Publications, and together with Anastasia Petrenko, we decided to take a book written by her mother, combining the science of aphrodisiacs with uh, just good old-fashioned Ukrainian home cooking to put together this really interesting and unconventional aphrodisiac cookbook called Intimacy on the Plate. Straight out of Ukraine. Hello, everyone. It's Anastasia. I'm glad to present my mom's book, Intimacy on the Plate. Uh, my mom, Olga Petrenko, is a housewife who dedicated years of her life to crafting original dishes that combine tradition with innovation. She combined her knowledge of chemistry and her passion for cooking. So what are aphrodisiacs? When people think about aphrodisiacs, they think about some drug that immediately makes you horny. But it's not true. Aphrodisiacs are any substances that increase libido when consumed. The focus of this book, Intimacy on the Plate, wasn't just about, you know, uh, eat this uh, crazy herb that we found in the jungle and you'll get a boner that lasts eight hours and have ten orgasms. It was more about, one, addressing the hormonal, nutritional deficiencies that people tend to experience, especially as they get older, even if they really love their partner and they have a long history together, they may find that the romance in their life is dying down. And then two, creating an atmosphere that is optimally conducive to intimacy and sexual pleasure and just satisfaction with your connection with your partner. There are male and female aphrodisiacs. Three major types of aphrodisiacs for men are mineral, vegetable, and animal. For example, zinc is the most important trace element for the male body. It increases libido and male sex hormones. Most people think of oysters as a great aphrodisiac. And it's true because they're rich of zinc. And zinc is important because it increases libido and male sex hormones. Men, your seminal fluid, for example, is very high in zinc. The book includes more than 200 recipes of a wide range of ingredients. Vegetables, mushrooms, nuts, fruits, especially seafood and fish, and also spices and drinks. There's actually an entire section of the book dedicated just to chocolate recipes, because as most people know, chocolate is one of the world's most popular aphrodisiacs, although not everyone knows why it is. One reason is that it contains a compound called phenethylamine, or PEA for short, which is the same thing that is produced in your brain when you fall in love. So that's one of the reasons why we associate chocolate with Valentine's Day and romance, because it actually contributes to the literal, literal chemical reaction in your brain that happens when you're falling in love. Another is theobromine, which produces a feeling of euphoria. It's also where we get the name food of the gods from, theo, meaning that, and is very high in minerals like magnesium that definitely contribute to blood flow and just your total ability to, you know, function sexually. One of my favorite and the easiest one is chocolate risotto. All you need is rice, like 60 grams of it, milk, one glass, cream, 
50 milliliters and of course dark chocolate around 150 grams. Uh, to prepare you need to combine the milk with the rice and bring this mixture to a boil, add some chocolate, simmer over low heat for 20 minutes and stir in butter and remove from heat. You can decorate the prepared dish with berries of your choice. Uh, my mom combined her knowledge of chemistry with her passion for cooking. Uh, so she applies her scientific knowledge of chemistry to her re recipes. So all meals she offers in the book have the potential to be the perfect aphrodisiacs. And one of the most important things about the tone of the book, I think, has to do just with creating a very down-to-earth and comfortable sort of exchange between partners here. Uh, as an American who has traveled around the world several times over, I can tell you the Ukraine has a, a culture of comfort, coziness, family values that I think we really miss out a lot on in the West. They really highly value creating the right kind of environment at home, caring for the people in your family. It's tradition that goes back hundreds of years in this culture. And that's part of why we really wanted to help translate this book first in English from uh, Olga's native Ukrainian and then prepare it and publish it in the United States because we really feel like these are the kinds of recipes and values and just overall philosophy that really has a place in the West that people could learn from and gain a lot from. My parents have a happy marriage for over 35 years so far and my mom wants to help other family to sustain great healthy relationships and live these happy romantic lives. So we definitely invite you to come check out Intimacy on the Plate. It's available on Amazon in ebook format, physical book format, and even audiobook if you prefer to listen. And it will be available just before Valentine's Day, just in time for you to start preparing something that your lover will appreciate and could hopefully bring something extra, something special to your lives. So thank you, Spooky61, for the question that kind of threw us into a topic, which was a lot of fun. But um, I'm trying to see. Is there anything else you can think about? Age gaps or anything? Nope. Not I, much there for me. Not much there. So, yeah, I, it was a... It was a awesome revelation for me like i said the whole campground rule at beyond the love i walked in there stayed in that class for 10 minutes and came out with a waha yay <laughs> i'm sane i'm okay sort of thing so um no tentacle links recently oh i feel like i'm missing somebody i'll have to go through my fet mail again so but um no oh there was somebody and it was yesterday they sent it to me so i don't have it on the notes but um, other than that, no other tentacle links. Um, wow. Man, for as much stuff as we had to talk about over the last couple of podcasts just to catch up, I think we're caught up. I'm looking forward to winter wickedness. So watch you auction in your underwear. Are you going to wear your chaps? I might wear my chaps. <laughs> that would be fun. So... Our end music is provided by Pocket Universe. You're listening to a song called Whim. <laughs> The official E.A. Twatter is The Cage, Der Dom Chore, maybe, and DJ in Austin. The person we've seen most recently is MD Sub. Current sender of tentacles is Ohio Hedgehog. And the provider of graphic novels is Johnny Jackhammer. And the official food that goes on boobs is provided by Satine. Bye, Don. Bye, Dan. <laughs> <laughs>